Wow, look at all the people at Forex Start today. That's amazing. Let's go. <laughs> Sounds better on big speakers. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Come on, How are you? <laughs> Keith, WTF? Yeah, hey, man. Good morning, 8 a.m. New York time. Good to see you, currency traders. Welcome to your live Forex trading live stream at YouTube on the Forex Not Today YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and like. And hey, we're going to go through um, yesterday's, we're going to go to yesterday's video. I guess I should pull that up. We're going to go to yesterday's video um, and I'm going to answer your questions. You know what? Let's try something new, 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 new. Let's try something new, new. Let's try something new, new. I came up with this idea yesterday. Hang on. And I'm like, I wonder if that'll, I wonder, I wonder what that would do. All right, hang on. Uh, let me go over here, I suppose, branded scene. And I go to community on the Forex.today YouTube channel. And it says, uh, what? Uh, so go here. Uh, what should I cover today? Question mark. Okay. Go there and leave a comment. Let's try this. Boom. So now it's nicely organized. Uh, it's right below the NFP. I posted it yesterday. I guess I shouldn't have, but anyways. Uh, so here we go. Here's the link. So if you have a question you want me covered today, post it right there. Or wait, maybe that doesn't make sense. Hang on. What if I do this? Uh, share behind the scenes photo. Can I only do this? Oh, hey. Let's do it this way. Wait, 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 wait. What should I cover today? What? Um, what's the date today? Uh, Thursday, August. Thursday, August. What is it? 8th? 2019. Okay. Post, post uh, let's see. Boom. There you go. Can I, yeah, leave a comment. What do you want me to cover today? Let's try that. Okay. You got that? Commitment of traders. Uh, okay. We can do that. Put that in there. Okay. There we go. So that cool. This might be a better way to organize things. Uh, okay. Cool. So let's try that. Uh, and well, let's move on. Uh, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne McDonald. Nice to meet you. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you very much for being a client. We appreciate you. We work hard for you. Uh, if you are new to these webinars, we would like to uh, take this opportunity to say, hey, when you feel confident, 
uh, in your skills and your abilities and you want to try trading real money in the foreign exchange market, we hope that uh, these webinars earn your loyalty and respect and therefore you choose Trader's Way as the prime broker to your new successful Forex trading business. So please visit tradersway.com and start with a demo account today. Download MT4 and then when you're done, uh, you'll see in the description below the video, you can download all my chart templates for free. So you can install my chart templates on your new Trader's Way MT4 and uh, what I use every day, you can use every day. So compliments of the firm. Thank you very much, Trader's Way. So today I, I, I propose we cover things like dollar and yen pairs and gold and oil, that kind of stuff, maybe commitment of traders. Um, if you have a particular um, currency pair you'd like me to cover or you have a specific question you'd like me to cover, please leave it on the com community part of the YouTube um, channel, which uh, the link has been provided. Um, or you can just go to youtube.com slash forex today and then click on community. Okay, so we'll leave that. And I think this is going to reload a lot faster than those video pages do, since there's no videos and, and there's no sort of uh, suggested videos and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So let's see if that's organized. Chuck Duck says he set up the index profile today, managed to get a few scalps today. Right on. Uh, seven comments. Cool. Right on, guys. Thank you. Looks like maybe this will work. Cool. Uh, all right. So we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, cool. I want to go through the stuff I want to go through, obviously. Um, you might be watching this euro dollar. We've been sitting here for a while. This is a uh, monthly M2, which is a short uh, monthly pivot. And then this whole uh, pink area is a take profit zone for bulls. So somebody went up and took profit here. Now, the thing is, on a monthly basis, that's not a take profit. The, all right. So we haven't gone to where we're supposed to go. Uh, bulls are supposed to be buying around here. Bears are supposed to be selling around here. And so we don't really know what's going on. Okay. Hey, Wayne, do you check COT report? Yes. Thaco says, didn't get the index. No, I didn't send it. Okay. Didn't send it. Okay. Didn't send it. All right. Okay. See what I mean? So, hmm, where are we? So if you're a bull, you want to go all the way here. If you're a bear, you want to go all the way down here and we're sort of not really set for either. I think if you're a bull though, you want to come down into these moving averages and then up. Okay. And we will need dollar weakness. Okay. Neato, right? So right now this, this uh, 21 EMA on the four hour, it is probably the most important thing on the chart. Okay. So if you're a bull, chow is what you're thinking for next week. So you should already, it's Thursday, right? Which means on Thursdays, you should already be setting up for next week. So that would be an example of that. We should be on our way to 132.50. Is that right? 132.50. I don't know. I can't read that. Oh, sorry. You're 112. Sorry. I can't even see that. 113.50. So I think I can't see that, honestly, especially with these lights. Oh, I got to find my glasses. So 111. So 112.50. Yeah, 132. It hasn't been 132 in like 10 years. Sorry. After a while, it just becomes numbers. So this is where I started trading, right in here. Isn't that great? 
is where my currency uh, career started. So I was saying the other day, maybe during non-farm payrolls, that when I started uh, trading, um, it was great because you would buy the euro and make money, and then buy the euro, make money, and buy the euro, make money, and buy the euro, make money, and buy the euro, make money, buy the euro, make money, buy the euro, make like we in the beginning it seemed pretty straightforward. So uh, I gave the story of my father who was um, trading with me. You know, he would like buy the euro, walk the dog around the block come back and cash out with money <laughs> like stuff like that like uh, and, and I, I don't think we had charts back then so it was just like oh yeah buy the euro waste an hour come back and cash out with profit okay So anyways, uh, great, huh? So here we are now. Mm -hmm. And then this noise. Mm -hmm. There's some noise here. Mm -hmm. Lots of noise here. Mm -hmm. And Okay, we're kind of getting back into there. Very interesting. All right, I just want to take a look. Let's go to the exotics. And Chuck Duck's like, hey, you can't make Wayne do all the work for you. All right. Uh, let's take a look at here. Very nice. Okay. So this is where you're supposed to stop trading. I think we probably talked about it yesterday. Uh, the 21 is a scalp zone. So you could say, well, I'm done the the swing trade, but if you want to monkey around with the scalp, no one's going to yell at you over a scalp, right? So maybe drop into, oops, let's go back to that four hour. I want to mark it. Okay, I'm going to mark it like, well, I guess it was right off that pivot too. So let's mark it anyways. So what do you do after the bouncy bounce? You could try again selling off of the um, four hour. There we go. This is what I'm trying to mark. So imagine in your mind, if you will, your mind's eye, that you knew the four hour 21 was here and you were a bear. Are there any opportunities? What's the first sign that there might be an opportunity? Top. Drop. So lower low. Then what? Lower high off of a roll reversal, right? So maybe somewhere in, somewhere in here. Oops. Somewhere in here, you get short. It's not really a lot of meat on the bone, but this is what scalpers do. They love it. Scalpers love it. They love it. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, come on, stupid thing. Is it this one? So you end up selling here is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And these are five-minute candles, right? So... You probably made some money here, and then you made some money here, and then you made some money here. Obvious pivot, you should stop. Okay. Go back to the roll reversal. Maybe you made some money here, and some here. Really, you should stop. Okay. These are little follow up scalps. Remember, the actual bearish trade is dead. It's done. You already skinned it. It's a trophy on your wall. Uh, these are just like pissy little scalps to, to follow it up. Does that make sense? You're a bear. The big trade's dead. But you're not, you don't think it's, you, you know, you still have some drops to squeeze out here. So obvious uh, resistance, both dynamically and using pivots. 
lower low, lower high sell, lower low, lower high sell is the basics of it. And then true scalping is, you know, like uh, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. These are all cells, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower, lower, lower right? So on and so forth. Lots of little follow-up little scalps. Now, you could be thinking uh, double bottom counter trend. Okay, so what would you be doing there? Well, basically the same, but the opposite. You have to have your obvious support, so now you need the double bottom, and then you got to follow that up with little scalps up. Down, 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 right? Up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 down right? Like that kind of stuff. Well, which currency pair is this? Doesn't matter, but it's the it pound yen. I kind of like this setup. Okay. So clearly we're at the bottom here. So what you should be doing right, is deciding when this bottom has been defined. And sometimes we just need a higher, high, higher, low scenario. And if you're looking for the double bottom counter trend, then that's how you do it. Okay. The next challenge would be here, which is a pivot. And then a breach above that is even better. And that gets you to the next. Okay. Now I try to train myself. I try. Oh Lord, do I try. Uh, to never look for reversals and counter trends. As a trend trader, you're better to just keep trading the trend. And if it consolidates for a while, okay, fine. And But eventually, whatever macroeconomic conditions created the trend in the first place will likely still be around. Uh, I think it's very deadly to sit around looking for reversals. But nonetheless, what else are you going to do if you're a bull? Now, I don't think many people are bullish on that, right? So anyways, but it could happen, right? Could be a rabbit, could be. So I'd rather wait for the, uh, the actual next wave down, which would be Monday's pivot points. You understand? Like I, I say, it's Thursday. So you should be planning your trades, your Monday and Tuesday trades. Okay. So like, uh, do you want to be a bull or a bear on this? This is gold. Someone said bear, really? It seems very bullish to me. Uh, in fact, it's a moo trade. So what's the next trade? Let's simplify this a little bit. Let's go back to the other one. So there's a few things that you could do here. You look at old peaks.
Okay. What if I can change the opacity? Must be a way. I'm not going to mess with it. So, anyways, there's one way. I suppose you can kind of play with that area uh, as well. I'm looking at this area. So, really, it comes down to the plan being if you're a bull, like that next week. Any thoughts on that? You guys are so funny. I could trade on almost any chart, I think. This one, but we can, uh, yeah, we can change it. Every breaking wave on the shore. Tells the next, there'll be one more. And every gambler knows that to lose is what we're really here for. I thought I heard the captain's voice. There we go. So anyways, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, for next week, yo. Okay. Oops. Let's just play around. Let's go a little further out. Nothing. A little further out. Nothing. A little further out. So we're not really running into any problems till about here. And that's the beginning of the challenge. So let's go back to a daily. And that's not for a while, huh? That might be like a September short. Yeah. Maso. Tosa says, uh, hey, Wayne, is it possible to brief on how to read the COT? Yeah, there's probably a dozen videos on YouTube that I've done on explaining the Commitment of Traders report. I'll probably do it a little bit later. I'm assuming you added it to the topics of the day, right? This is where you post your topics of the day. It says, what do you want me to cover today? And then you leave a comment under that. Weekly jobless claims? Yeah, okay. Mr. B says, what do I think gold's going to be doing when the stock market opens? How would I know? So the better question, Mr. B, is like, where is support and where is resistance? Because you know you buy at support and you sell at resistance. So that's a much better question then what do you think it's going to do at the market open? First of all, I don't know. Second of all, a thought is no, not much worth, right? So we know that like this might be an interesting scenario for a trader, for example, or this could be an interesting scenario for a trader. Uh, this might be interesting. This might be interesting. Okay. 
this might be interesting, so on and so forth. So right now, we're not at a tradable price, so it really doesn't matter. Okay? So everything starts, Mr. B, with support and resistance. Now, as I just showed you, I just showed you my plan for next week. Okay? So I, I'd like it to come down a little bit, and then I'd like it to go up a lot. So how do you interpret that as, you know, what should we do today? Well, it'd be really cool if it went up a little bit and then down, and then you stop selling, and then you started looking for reversals. So I would scalp down and swing long. Okay? But remember, all of that has to start with uh, a trade plan. So my trade plan, which I have already explained, is... Uh, that's too far out. Hang on. There we go. So my trade plan, what, what I would like, first of all, because we're above the R2, I have to stay a bull. So I'd like it to head down and then up between now and Monday. Maybe between now and Tuesday, really. So it might just happen today. So do you see that, uh, that 21 is trying to catch up? So it might, it might do something like that. We might actually kick off the uh, 21. Okay. Cool. Well, that's what I want to do. So if that's true, then my scalping tells me, going down to a smaller time frame, oops. My scalping tells me maybe down today and up tomorrow. Does that make sense, Mr. B? Have the scalping lessons been helpful? I've given several scalping lessons over the last uh, couple of weeks. Gonna look at WTI. My oh my, WTI. So again, I'm below here, and I, I, I really can't be a bull. I want to be a bull. I need a double bottom first. So I'm hoping to see something like this. Um, that's very hopeful. And this is very down. But remember, everything, every trend comes to an end. But I don't want to be aggressive. I want to be conservative. Remember, I don't want to be aggressive really until uh, September. Okay? So I, I'm trying to keep my powder dry, especially if I'm a bull and it's obviously a bearish market. All right? So it's, it's going to be a while before this turns up, right? Thank you for subscribing, everybody. I appreciate that. We're almost to 9,000 subscribers now. That's really cool. TBM says as a gold uh, sell. Uh, that's very aggressive. Okay. Uh, recap the scalping lessons. Uh, no, go back and watch the videos. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm thinking, wouldn't that be great? But the reason it'd be great is from that point, you can start 
potentially drawing a new regression, right? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's just the drawing tool is weird because it went off screen. But anyways, okay, but we're a long ways from that. So I don't, I don't want to be aggressive. So I'll do things like this to remind me the direction of the market, right? Right. It really doesn't tell me anything else that I really care for. Um, I'd want to remind myself if I'm a bull and I am a bull in oil, I, I would like oil to go up, not down. Um, I have to remind myself that that might be ridiculous in these market conditions. Remember, I'm trying to wait for market conditions to agree with my analysis. So I look at this and I'm like, no, oh, nobody agrees with me here. And I don't bet, right? You understand? I don't bet. I want sure things. I'm if I'm a, if I'm a bull, I wait for bullish markets and then I cr I crush it. Uh, you know, I go I, by crush it. I mean uh, I'm aggressive. I get into trades and I go go go. And here I'm a bull and the market's bearish and I'm not trying to get into trades. I'm not trying to reverse it. I'm trying to stay out. So I'll do things like that to remind myself that the market conditions are not conducive for my, uh, my for my bias. Right. Where can one obtain the regression tool? OK, you go to insert channels linear regression every mt4 has it okay maybe you prefer standard deviation let's see if it works the same insert channels standard deviation Pretty much the same thing. Okay. What's on the top right chart? The rainbow colors. Oh, well, that's just a pound yen. I stopped using it because you guys said you don't like it. I like it. It's fine. I think it's pretty. Uh, it's got enough information. Okay. But some people don't like it. So I look at it, for example, and I, and I see, uh, let me mark it. With a big fat white marker, uh, you know. I bet you the line is good. okay. Um, so I see things like this is a sell zone, uh, this is a sell zone, uh, this is a sell zone, and unfortunately, this is the sell zone this week. But we didn't hit it because it fell so hard the week before that we didn't get a trade. So that's all I need to see. In this case, I'm not looking at like moving average crossovers. I guess you could, right? You you could say the same thing that I just said, um, but using a slightly different tool. Uh, you could say like, uh, this is a cell. Okay. This is a cell. Okay, cool. Maybe this is a cell. I don't know. I just find it, it's pretty and I think it's easy to see. So I can do uh, trading. So this didn't get a price action entry, um, but but even like pivot entries, it didn't even give a pivot entry. It was so gone. But uh, I think it's easy to see, but it confuses some people. I get a lot of negative feedback in the webinar. So I'm like, OK, cool. We'll just go back to the other one. And that one works just as well. So I have no complaints. Oh, you guys don't have uh, linear regressions? D 
Dean says, what is that tool? I mean, I haven't seen, really, you guys don't have linear regressions? This is very standard. Uh, I'm surprised. This isn't anything that I've done. Every MT4 I've ever had gives you an option for channels. But I don't use MT5, so maybe you guys are using MT5. Or maybe you need to, I don't know, it, it's always been there. Um, maybe you need to customize your tools. Uh, but uh, I guess it would be in here, right? Here's an equidistant channel, so I could probably arrange that and say, so look at this. I don't want this equidistant. I, uh, that's stupid, so who cares about that? I'll get rid of equidistant, but I will put in linear regression, and I'll put that on my chart. So now I have it here. So I can say, what is the trend in gold on the 15-minute chart? And I go left to right, and it's done. See, I didn't even do the slope. I just went left to right, and it said that's the trend. Okay. Is that cool? But remember, I'm a bull. So I need something. What do I need? Well, what if it went from the lower... Oops, i got to go back to pink. What if it went to the lower bound, and then back above the mean this the middle line is the mean okay so what it's doing is it's calculating uh, a, a deviation and a deviation okay and it's saying this is one standard deviation this is one standard deviation the whole thing is two standard deviations from the mean right so Right? That's all it's saying. So right now we're at an average price, a mean price. Okay. If some point we get and we stay in the upper bound, then it's still bearish, but, uh, well, upper bearish, not lower bearish, uh, conservatively bearish, not aggressively bearish. And then, of course, if you're above, okay, then you change directions and you draw a new regression. Also, the, the amount of time you're measuring matters because remember, you're calculating the mean, look, right? And then you calculate the standard deviation. Remember, I did this all in class. I did this. I had to do this with calculators and stuff. But you, you calculate the mean and then you calculate the standard deviation. And then you can do the regression, right? So if I measure farther to the left, so all I'm doing now is I'm not changing the slope. I'm just moving my mouse perfectly right to left. And what it's doing is to calculate the mean, it has to add up all of these and divide by the number of candles to get the mean. And then it's going to look for the deviations from the mean to create a standard deviation and then plot the standard deviation above and below the mean to get yourself a regression. And it's called a regression because over time, right, uh, or mean reversion if you prefer, uh, at some point when you're one standard deviation away from the mean, it's likely to revert back to the mean. So uh, a standard deviation above the mean, revert back to the mean. Standard deviation below the mean, revert back to the mean, okay? So at calculating the mean is the first step in, in doing a regression. So if I go right to left, all I'm telling it is to say, add the, the value of all these candles and then divide by that period. So even though I'm only moving my, my mouse right to left, to, right, it, it will adjust and change the angle because the mean is changing. So watch this. I'm moving right, watch my mouse. I'm not changing it, it's, it's doing it automatically. My mouse is still moving left, and we, right? And the, the, the channel has gone from down to up. So has the trend changed? No, I'm looking at a different chunk of time. So to add another uh, calculation, I can grab from where we are. Again, I'm only gonna move right to left, and I'm gonna say, that was weird. Uh, 
calculating from this candle to that candle, or I can go even a little farther. Whoop, whoop. Wow, this is chunky, man. Chunky. Wow, it's freaking out. Wow. Let's try this again. There we go. So in the in the longer, let's say the medium period of time, gold has been up. Let's say going all the way back to the beginning of August, gold has been up. But for the last couple of days, it's been down. So how do you use this in your trade planning? Well, first of all, you should have a bias. I'll just, I have to say that. Second of all, you can say, well, my analysis says I'm better off being a buyer. So my bias on this chart on using this time frame is I want to be a buyer. Okay. But under current market conditions, it's not a good time to be a buyer. So I'm a buyer, but the market is bearish under this time frame, just since this period. Okay. So as a buyer now, my, I'm going to use technical analysis, and it doesn't have to be this reversion regression tool. It can be anything that you want, moving averages, price action, oscillators, all that kind of stuff. I could say the next MACD cross up or the next stochastic cross up or the next CCI cross up, whatever you use. Um, you determine using technical analysis that when the market goes from bearish back to bullish as a buyer you you start getting into the the market so it might do something like this uh, 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 uh. game on is you at this point looking at this low and then this higher low and then this hundred percent retracement first of all that's a big red flag for bears, that's a giant opportunity, fib retracement, one, two, three type pattern for a bull. But at some point, this would also create oscillator crossovers. At some point, this is going to create moving average crossovers. It's going to do a lot. So whoever is a bull waiting to be a bull is going to be using whatever tool they use. And it doesn't matter what tool you use, it's going to tell you go, unless you don't know what you're doing. And of course, most people don't know what they're doing. Chuck Duck says, I often adjust the deviations to suit the highs and lows. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I try to do it because, remember, if I'm a bull and I see the market is bearish, I'm trying to talk myself out of it. So I'm just trying to say, like, I guess you could do it this way. Um Based on what has been happening in the medium term, I see this. In fact, you could look at it. Let me change it. You could, it's almost too bad that you can't have an arrow here, right? And it just says, yo, dude, this is up. Okay. So I look at this and I kind of set it and I say, the medium term market conditions are up. That's that. Okay, and that's enough time going back several days, right? That, that's enough time. I mean, you can adjust it again, and it might change again, but then you're changing when you enter and all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of just telling me, generally speaking, look, this is a bullish market. Don't be a bear. That's all. But that's that's what, uh, right? This, this is why it's uh, part of bias, right? Oh, bro, this is live. Okay. Do you draw it from the highs? You can draw it from wherever you want. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. There's no right way. What do you want to do? So the first thing I want to do is I pop a chart in which I might get a trade. 30 minutes or lower, for example. So... I trade like this on all strategies. I look at some medium term period. So I'm using a 30 minute chart though. One way you could do it is you can look at a one hour chart and then drop into a 15 minute chart. Okay, uh, one hour, and then you go to a 15 minute. What did I do? Well, the one hour is medium term. This is shorter term. 
Well, I'm, I can do it different ways. I can use the 2155, and that's, right, what, what does 2155 say? Bullish, 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 less bullish, less bullish, less bullish, neutral, 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 neutral. I can use linear regressions and say, well, I want to go back two weeks with a linear regression for trend, and then I'll go back two days with a linear regression for price. See, I use the 2155 for the market, really, so I should have said market, not trend. And then I use the, oops, the, uh, the 5.8 for price. Well, I could use you know, a, a two-week linear regression for market, and I can use a two-day linear regression for price, and then use simple support and resistance price action moving average crossover, oscillator type technical analysis to then confirm and deny that the uptrend has resumed. But that's all trend uh, trading is, guys. Right? Don't complicate it with all your mathematical mumbo jumbo. The market's up, dude. You're supposed to be a bull. I don't like I just said, I don't even look for reversals. I hate reversals. I love trends. So if the market's going up, bro, be a bull. Get on the clue train. You say, well, it's not bullish right now. Well, then wait. What's the big deal? <laughs> right? Come on. Right? Sassy uh, Veyron, uh, this webinar is sponsored by a broker, so it'd be kind of rude to ask a question like that, huh? Why don't you go to tradersway.com? Right? Yeah. But try not to go into a Ford dealership and ask if they have Cadillacs. Don't go to Chick-fil-A and ask for Zaxby sauce. Come on, bro. Ugh! Anyways, see what I mean? Bup, bup, bup. I'm trying to be helpful here. All right? All right. So do you want to drop it even smaller? Or change it. So let's go back to where it all began. Uh, let's look, okay. This. Okay, so we got, we did a regression and our spidey senses tell us this is an uptrend. <laughs> Right? Woohoo! But several of you guys said you shorted this. Like, come on, bro. Really? I get it. I can see the weakness. Okay, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get you away from trading tops and bottoms. Right, Chuck Duck? <laughs> like, come on. I have a friend that every time you take him to a steakhouse, he orders salmon, and then you go to seafood, and he doesn't want to eat seafood. Like, what the hell? What are you going to do? You're going to get chicken now? Like... <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm trying to teach you to be cautious and conservative. Selling this might be an awesome trade, but I'm not going to teach you to do it. Because that, is, in my opinion, is too aggressive. Okay. Now, you might back out even farther and stuff, but the problem is you're going to start looking for things, and you will always find a reason. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Carlito says, what about mechanical trading? Okay, the only problem with that is you're throwing away fundamentals. Okay. Okay. Uh, but whatever, man. Um, I, so I'm going to build a tool for you guys. Actually, it's being built right now. That's going to help you plan your trades. And that's, you know, that's how I think you should use any algorithm. 
I don't think you should set it, forget it, and have it trade, 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 trade. I don't believe that that's the right way of doing it. But so like, for example, 10 years ago, I think it was more than that, 10 years ago, I was at an exclusive hedge fund manager conference. You had to be invited. You had to be licensed and registered. I, I don't know. It probably cost me 10,000 bucks for the lunch. Um, well, it was a day, though. It was at a fancy club, like really fancy place uh, uh, on uh, Park Avenue in New York City. You know, I mean, literally on the park. And uh, so I talked to a lot of different people. And they were talking about, you know, how they started their own funds with $20 million of their own money. And they were going to trade that for two years and then, then bring in investors. And, you know, these are all Goldman Sachs type, you know, ex Goldman Sachs type guys. And so, but anyways, one guy, he had millions of dollars in algorithms already. And he had built a um, high frequency trading platform. So he spent like $10 million on that for the, the, the hardware. And then he, he said he had something like, uh, you know, I don't know, a, a thousand algorithms running in the back room all the time. Were they trading? No. So what was going on? Well, they run all the algos. And it would determine that all these would determine what kind of market are we in now? That's it. What what is working now? And what's the all the computers? Because the computers would find nine hundred and ninety things that would not work, and then it would find ten things that would work pretty well. And then they'd look at the top two, and they say, "Okay, boys," because you know Wall Street traders are vastly like ninety nine percent men, right? So it would say, "Hey, boys." Here's the strategy of the day. Boom, boom, boom. That's what we're doing today. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I want you to have the, the trade planning tool that says, um, hey, Ron, um, do you want to be a bull on gold or a bear on gold? And Ron says, well, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of like if I was a client, I'd say, hey, hey, Ron, um, uh, what are you going to do with my money? And Ron says, oh, well, I'm going to buy gold. And I say, oh, well, why do you want to buy gold? And Ron says, what, reason number one, reason number two, reason number three. And I say, okay, that's really cool. We should do it. Here's my money. Go buy some gold. So Ron's bias then for uh, bias is gold, right? Bias is buy. All right, cool. So the daily trade planner would then say, here's where I suggest you would buy gold. What's another word for suggestion? It's a plan. It's an idea. It's a plan. It's a hypothesis. And that's how I think most people are supposed to be using their algorithms, not, you know, set it, forget it. Like you're going to put a thousand dollars in a trade account, walk, walk away. And two or three years later, you're a millionaire and you're like, oh, my EA did all the work. I, I don't think that's the right path you should be searching for. I, I equate it to like. Humanity does this a lot, by the way. They ask the wrong questions. So, like, for example, how do you go to the farthest star? How get star? What is it? Sirius? The star? Sirius or Sirius? How do you get to the closest, uh, not, not star, I guess, uh, uh, solar system? Like if you're going to visit another solar system and see another Earth-like planet, how, how do you get there? Oh, well, you travel at the speed of light, right? 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 See, 
you travel at the speed of light for uh, 300 years. <laughs> so you got two problems here. One, we don't know how to travel the speed of light. And two, we don't live for 300 years. Is it Alpha Centauri? Thank you for that. All right. So humanity starts working on these problems. How do you travel the speed of light? How do you travel at sea? And how do you live for 300 years? Okay. And this is, you know, humanity works at this. Let me tell you something. Well, first of all, we, we don't live for 300 years. And I don't think you can tweak the human body to do it. Now, you might say hypersleeping and all that kind of stuff. All right, sounds like science fiction, but I don't know how long that'll take. But there's some real problems like right now, if you are in coma for two years and you wake up in coma, your legs are at uh, don't work because of atrophy. How are you supposed to go 300 years, right? So whatever, that's a real big problem. But also, how do you move the speed of light? Well, the problem is if you're moving 99% of the speed of light, which is impossible, and you want to go 99.1% of the speed of light, so now you're going from 99 to 99.1, the differential of only 0.1, it will take you 10 times more energy. And now you want to go 99.2. Okay, and I don't mean 100%. That's 1,000% faster, more energy, guys. Now to go to 99.2, you'll need to go 10x of 10x. Okay, which is a million times more energy than going 99.2. At 99%. So 99.1 is a thousand times more energy. 99.2 is a million times more energy. You see the problem? So the issue is it's the wrong question. You need a warp drive. You can't you can't fly. And by the way, if you're flying at the speed of light. Your spaceship that used to look like uh, uh, like this, this is your spaceship, okay? And there's people inside, and they're alive and breathing oxygen and stuff. Uh, when you're moving the speed of light, your spaceship looks like this, a, a, a perfect long stream of, <laughs> of material, right? So you need a quantum leap, you need a wormhole, you need a warp drive, because uh, warp drives, they don't move, the ship never moves. Okay, so anyways, uh, so, all these, uh, so how do you get an algorithm to turn your $1,000 into a $1 million dollars with you doing no work? That's a dumb question, and it's the wrong question. That's like saying, how can I make, my, uh, make a spaceship go the speed of light? It cannot go the speed of light. That's the issue. Yeah, or Orlean Burke uh, says 99.99. You almost need the mass of the entire universe. Like, you don't have that kind of energy, right? It's like, oh, my God. Now, right, so you need to focus on the warp drive. It's the wrong question is all I'm trying to say, right? Uh, Masota says, how long does cutting rates usually, how long does it take? It's instant because the Fed just does it. Okay. They do it all day, every day. Okay. It's just buying. The, the Fed clicks a button and starts buying and they drive it down. So anyways, uh, so, so if you use the algorithm like I'm creating the trade planner, it says, okay, so Ron wants to buy this asset. Great. That's, that's his alpha. Where should he do it? Well, tomorrow this might be a good price. The next day this might be a good price. And depending on what happens after that, on uh, Tuesday this might be a good price. So it's anticipating, for example, okay, you want to buy low, of course. And then what if, oops. 
Okay, you want to buy low. And then what if it makes another low? Well, that still might be an interesting place. And then if it makes a, a higher high, that might be a better place, right? But it starts looking at it like, if I were you, this is what I'd be looking for. It's not putting you in the trade. You still have to do the technical analysis, but it's making suggestions. So if you knew, for example, let me try to make an example. If it said uh, this, Ron, this is a good place to consider buying gold. You could say, okay, well, that's a good price. And now Ron is watching it and it goes into here and then it does this. What should Ron do? Metapur says that if you travel at the speed of light, the mass of the spacecraft, right, would be infinite. Well, the issue, but infinite, but also long. So, like, for, for a bajillionth of a second, your spaceship, if it was traveling one billion miles, one billion miles, your spacecraft would be here, the tail, right, the back of your spaceship will be here, the front of your spaceship will be here and you'll be stretched out for a millisecond, one billion miles long. I don't know about you, but if somebody stretched me one billion miles long, I think it might hurt. Shoot, it might even kill me. <laughs> so anyways, so anyway, that, that's the idea, guys, of a trade planner. It says, look, okay, bro. If you were thinking about buying, keep your eyes on this area and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And then you you still have to decide whether you should enter or not. OK. And that's what a trade plan is, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Mike, that's funny. <laughs> Every breaking wave. Um, okay. All right, so let's go to the questions. I'm assuming you've posted your questions. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to re refresh. Thank you for posting your questions on the community channel at forex.today, or should I say youtube.com slash forex.today. Well, Juan, different strokes for different folks, right? And I'm talking uh, uh, only 10 people ask questions, really. Huh. All right. Uh, I'll leave it just one more time in case you've forgotten. Okay, so I'm going to go through these questions now. Hello, Wayne. Great video as always. Do you think it's smart if I just stayed out of the market when, uh, when they fly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, through R2 and S2. That's one way of doing it, Mr. Connor, but we call those moo trades. And it comes back from actually a weekly trade. So you, you're talking monthly, so it's not really a moo trade. But the idea is if it breaks above R2, oh, come on, come on, Bubba. Let's try this again. Okay. If it breaks above R2, Okay, don't sell. Maybe that X doesn't look good. Uh, don't sell. If it breaks below S2, don't buy. So I just showed like gold and something else, and I'm like, and so a bunch of people said they sold it up there. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you for the question, Mr. Connor. Uh, Yusti Yen, would you rate this double bottom thing forming other Yens? Of course. Uh, all right, we can take a look at that. Um, that's not a pair I typically trade, but I know it's at a key level, so we can take a look at that. Every breaking wave on the show. Okay, so first of all, what time frame, right? So I keep an eye on this. Um, in fact, I have it right here. Ow. It's a problem with having hardwood floors and a cart. My chair gets caught on it. So, uh, yeah, so I, I play around with it, obviously. I keep my eyes on it, obviously. But I don't typically trade USDM, but it's at a key level. So on this setup, we can take a look. And that's a daily. So we have one, two, three, four days now caught on the same R, uh, S3. That's an S3. Is that an important number? It, it might be. Could be, right? Could be a rabbit. Could be. So here we are on an hourly chart. What do you want to do? Is this a double bottom, I think, is the question. Yeah. So how are you going to trap it? Okay. Okay. That's a bottom line. This is a shoulder line. Okay. So you got a couple of things here. Plan A. Plan B. Okay. You can see this is technically bearish, but in here we're consolidating. So there is no market. Market. equals zero. There is no market. Okay. So therefore, I only use price. And you have a bias. If you're if you want to be a bull on this, you only have price. Now I just went over uh, something else. And I said, if you're below this price here, never buy. Okay, of course, there's never a never, but I try to stay out of it. Now, a double bottom, and you're a bull, you could say, well, that's the beginning of breaching this. So really, plan C is the best plan. Plan C is like this. But what if you don't want to wait? Okay? So you got to look at plan A, and you got to use price action. So let's take a look at that. Okay? So now, if you're using price action, you're, you're, you're thinking, right, that it's doing something like this today. Don't you stink? Okay, and you're using, this is the shoulder, which I highlighted using a different one, but you can see shoulder, bottom, bottom. So it's really um, stuck in here, so it's a mini range. So now you can drop into a smaller time frame. And what are we missing? Well, first of all, let's get rid of a, a few things. Um, indicator list. What is this? Uh, 200? Yeah. We're on a five-minute chart, so there is no such thing as trend. What is this? 55. I already said there's no market, so that's dead. 21, I said there's no market, so that's dead. And then um, Bollinger Bands, nah, we don't need that, dead. Okay, so this is all I'm looking at right now. We probably don't even need pivots on, on the setup anyways. Okay, so this is all we care about. So what happened? You missed it. 
Okay. So now you got to wait for it to cross back down and cross back up if you're going to try again. Well, how or why would that happen? Well, we'll probably retest this price area at some point. So it'll go up, down, and then back up. Okay. Now what else could we use here? Another measure of price is the oscillators. Let's do a darker color so we can see this. Okay. So you're sitting around and you're waiting to buy. And that's where your money is made, by the way. I say it every day, and I'm going to continue to say it every day. If you're using your charts to put yourself into trades, you're not doing it right. That's not how you trade. If you just did the analysis that I just showed you, and you started like basically, I think we started on a one hour chart, you're like, okay, I think this is gonna be a double bottom. And then you say, well, the market's dead, the trend's dead, but you know, I'm a long-term bull and we're below that area, so I need the double bottom, then I need the higher, low, higher, high, one, two, three type pattern, and we're gonna get it this way and get it that way. So we have this, and then we have 100 percent retracement, so I wanna buy the dip. So you do all of that and then you start dropping into smaller time frames and you're setting your charts up. And here you are on a five minute chart and you know somewhere around here you'd like to buy when it goes from oversold to back into the game. Then you, you took this trade. Lots of people, they sit here and they're trying to use oscillators to trade they're trying to use moving averages to trade. And they're like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm supposed to buy when the oscillators are oversold. I'm supposed to buy when the off. Uh, no, 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 no. You're supposed to have a trade plan. Okay. So if you were waiting for this to hit this price and then have the oscillator flip and take a 5A cross and you bought what, what, what actually just happened? Like, let's quantify this a little bit. What was so important about this? It's support. And you're a bull, and you have a trade plan to buy somewhere around that price when the market turns bullish again. I mean, that's the money maker. You were a bull. You multiplied m multiple time frames to identify where support is. And then when, when you were at support, you opened your chart on the five minute chart and now you're trading price up. How do we measure price? Overbought and oversold conditions for price, we use Stokes. Price action, over right? And in the moment, momentum, we use five eight moving averages. This I've been teaching this for 15 years, right? 15 years. That's how you make your money, right? That's why I think having an algorithm to think for you is the wrong question. Because that's how new traders try to trade. They think, okay, how do you oscillators work? And some idiot comes along and says, well, you pay me a thousand bucks and I will teach you how to trade an oscillator. You buy here, you sell here, you buy here, you buy here, you sell here, you buy here, right? And and but that's what you know an algorithm thinks too. And then you make it a little more complicated. Oh well, then you only do this with this and then that, and you start piling things together until your back testing finally gives you the results you want because you've tweaked it to fit your back test, and then it never happens again in the future and it makes a bunch of bad trades. You instead 
like I gave the example of the hedge fund manager with millions of dollars in computers. It just said, hey, man, um, you, you know, their support, the longer term trend is bullish. You should probably be a bull today. And then they take that information, give it, give it to their traders, and they buy, 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 and buy until it stops working. And the algorithm spits it out. And it sticks out like, oh, this is the strategy that's working now. Go do that. Okay. Let me give you a neat example of how powerful this is, what I just taught you. Okay. By the way, was that helpful? The idea of starting in a hard time frame, developing an idea of trend and bias, and then drop and finding the right price, and then dropping into a small time frame, get rid of the stuff you don't need, then using a focus on price. So now I, I, I look at the 5A cross at support with an oscillator to identify overbought and oversold conditions and all this kind of stuff. Does that feel like that was a nice little compressed thing. Let give, give, give me a minute here and I will blow your mind. I will blow your mind. What do we use there? Moving averages, oscillators, pivot points, right? YouTube.com slash FX bootcamp. Let me blow you away. This is going to blow you away, blow you away, blow you away. Get ready. Blow you away. I didn't want to click on it. Why did it start? Oh, I guess I could have done that. Why did it play? Uh, 2006 is all I wanted. Oh, I see. Play all. Still do. La, 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 la. All right. Let's go back. Today's the 8th, right? So how many? This is August. So how many years ago? How many years ago was this video? Uh, uh, it's exactly it, right? What? 13 years ago. Do you want to see what I was doing 13 years ago? I'm going to pick up. I haven't watched this video. I'm just going to pick it randomly. This is 13 years ago. Bootcamp. Today is Monday, August 7th, 2006. This is your daily video technical briefing. This is the Euro USD 15 minute chart just at the beginning of the US session. As you can see, um, the market is very flat, very, very flat. This represents uh, Friday afternoon, the weekend, the entire Asian session and the entire European session. Not much has happened. And there's, there's two reasons for this. Friday was non-farm payrolls. So you can see that gonna skip ahead. Uh, um, what you do want to try to uh, test, there's a, at least a new higher high. You see how Pierce Bollinger bands were rejected? Look at my settings, guys. 21.55.8. Okay. 8.53. Right in here is the 200 EMA. It's exactly the same. First target if you, if you were shorting. Uh, also, a confirmation of the short is... Uh, Stochastic cross back into the uh, 25 to 75% range. Okay. Price does not make a new lower low. Now it's attempting to. Oh, boom. Okay, there's a break. So you can see the piercing of the Bollinger Bands had a lot to do with this. The Bollinger Bands were narrowing, which means volatility was tightening. Price is being squeezed. Price had to break somewhere. It... 
I'll go to a different one. Either a triangle or, or a channel. So let's connect uh, the lows. This works so well. Let's connect that low on the bottoms. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's go this low. So look at the 55. What does that tell you? The low on the bottom candle there. Okay. Now, we could do a couple of different things. You could, you could make this a triangle, or you could make it a channel. So let's make it a, a channel. I'm making a parallel line. Oops, it didn't work. Let me try one more time. There we go. Okay. Kind of like our linear and regression as as today. It's in the uh, channel. It's an uptrend. And as soon as it breaks the uh, the bottom support line, it's a, uh, a reversal. Uh, we're going to watch stochastics very closely for clues. We're also going to watch the euro for clues. We have a 5.8 crossing, which indicates up. Uh, first target would always be the uh, 200 EMA. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Move a couple of clicks ahead on the pound, a couple of clicks ahead on the euro. Okay, ask yourself, what has changed? Well, the euro looks like it's overbought, just starting to uh, roll over. Lose angle and separation on the 5.8, but it's still pointing up. Looks like we're heading toward the 200 EMA. Um, look at the pound. The pound is much more interesting to me. I'll show you why. You can see the Bollinger Bands are actually closing and create, creating a top here. And uh, stochastics have crossed. See, what am I watching? I'm watching price action. The price has been in this up channel. And the subtle clues of change in direction. Diversions. Am I using okay. any different tools? So forget the euro. No. Let's zoom in on the pound. Uh, Look so at the price action. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. That's going to be confirmed by a stochastic divergence. It's going to be uh, confirmed by a stochastic crossover. It's going to be confirmed by Bollinger Bands closing, and it'll also be confirmed by a a, uh, a positive. Sandil says you sound so formal. This was one of the first videos on YouTube. I am not joking. So we weren't even used to watching people on the internet. It was a weird thing. You, when the, I did this video, you hadn't even heard of YouTube. It's before the IPO. It was before it was bought by Google. It was a tiny little thing where people would op upload videos from their phone, but most people didn't have cameras on their phones. You have to understand the world's changed Channel since I've break. done this. Before we do anything, let's... Webinars it. didn't exist. Look, I'm using pivot points. It just happens to be... 85.51, go back to the pound, and it looks like right here, price hits 85.50, so it hits the central pivot point and is clearly rejected. Bollinger Bands. It's going to drop like a ton of bricks, bro. Stochastic divergence sets in, and it looks like a channel line uh, may break on a rejection of the central pivot point. So, yeah, if this channel breaks, it's down, 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 my friend. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I even sound the same. I'm a child There's here, but still. Channel line has whoop, whoop. broken. It's going to so drop. Great angle and separation is formed on the stochastics. Um, first target would be the 200 DMA. Second target using pivot points. Let's see. S1 is 85.05. See, I so do all S1 this instantly now. At 85.05. I don't have to look at these things. I just target. know it. I can do all of this and in a M1 second. one is 84.63. That's a long ways away. I'm going to say a double bottom is going to be the first aggressive target. Why, why the double bottom? Because we're kicking off the 55, y'all. That uh, around 84.80, okay. But so I want to go for the next the pivot. I would. That's what I would do now is I'd go for the next pivot on a higher time It still time looks frame. good, and we still have good angle and separation on the, uh, on the stochastics. Then I want you to hold tight and aim for 85.05. If that can break and we still have good angle and separation, then we're going for the aggressive target of the uh, 84 area. 8480 area, which is a double bottom.
Okay, let's see what happens from here. Boom. Price is riding the five. Almost. See, I was much more of a scalper back then. Separation on the uh, on the five eight. What happens now? Two hundred under attack. Two hundred broken. Wow. Boom. Boom. Okay, first uh, goal <laughs> of eighty five <laughs> five has been reached. Oh my God! I haven't changed in thirty years. Thirty five. Um. Yeah. Looks like you had about thirty pips. If you if you're still in this, this went down to eighty four ninety. Um, will it reach eighty four eighty? Hmm. Don't know. You're gonna have to keep your eyes on the stochastics. Aha! Uh -huh. So forex student says, "What do you mean it would double bottom off of fifty five? Oh my God! So thank you for asking that question. Uh, oops, I didn't want to do that. I want to get back. So by the way, the reason I pulled that up. Is nothing has changed in 13 years. Oh, come on, YouTube. Nothing has changed in 13 years, guys. I still trade exactly the same way, same methodology and all that kind of stuff, same tools. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in 13 years. Isn't that awesome? So what you learned from me today Okay, by the way, this goes to Forex student. Click that link and watch these four videos, timing of your Forex trades. Uh, this one's moving averages. Another one is oscillators. Another one is pivot points. Another one's like Fibonacci, uh, a bunch of things. Um, you know, it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 80, 90 minutes. So this is about 90 minutes worth of training for free. Okay, and that'll answer your question. So like, so I'm always shocked. Like when you see that chart, I look at it and I did that 13 years ago. I look at it, I'm like, that's going to make a double bottom. I, I, can just, I just know it instantly. And now you're like, what do you mean you, what do you mean? Like I, I can just fix that. You just watch those 90 minutes. Now, if you don't put in the 90 minutes and actually, I don't think you will. Most people don't. They don't. Uh, so you can shock me and watch those four videos. And if you do, you're most likely to be put on a better path. Okay. All you have to do is watch those videos, but I, I swear to you, 95% of people won't watch them. They just, they don't. <laughs> like you, they would, just, they want me to answer. And then if I answered you right now, just told you, you're not going to listen anyways, and it wouldn't matter. So I'm, I'm just going to move on. There's 90 minutes of videos you can watch there for free that will really, really, really help you. So I hope you watch them. But... <laughs> They've been there for 13 years, um, which is amazing, right? Amazing. So uh, is this a good time to buy? No. But uh, there's some role reversals and stuff going on. But, but anyways, that, that's the uh, – that hopefully that answers the question in regards to USD yen. So thank you, thank you uh, Alex. All right, let's go to another question. How do you get a girlfriend? Risk management 101, maybe. Uh, risk management, not today. I've already gone an hour and a half. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Let's do that. Because uh, that, that I have to think about and give a big, long example. I just ran out of time on my 20-minute USD discussion. NASDAQ and other indices. That would be fun, except I don't have the charts, Robin. I don't have the charts. Sorry. How about gold? Jimbo, I spent a half an hour on gold today. Uh, USD pound. You mean pound USD. Okay, pound USD. Okay. Let's do it here then. Okay, so, czar for some reason here. Uh, let's change that to pig, pig dog. Okay, drag that over to pig dog, pig dog. All right, they're all pig dog now, I think. Pig dog, pig dog, pig dog, pig dog. Okay, let's see. I can't 
calculate the trend here. Oh, so I'm going to use a linear regression tool. Oh, weird. It wants me to do this way. Okay. Uh, oh, apparently it's a downtrend. Okay. So I'm best off, statistically speaking, finding reasons to sell. Now, on a smaller time frame, like a 15-minute chart, you're probably setting up a buy. Uh, that's probably not good. So I think between now, so like, again, Thursdays, what are you supposed to be doing on Thursdays? Setting up trades based on next week. Yeah, not, not Friday, but Monday and Tuesday. Okay, and that, that sell zone uh, is here. So uh, if you miss the first opportunity, you're going to look for something like this and like this. Oops. Okay. Uh, if, it, if it does bottom out here and go up, that's only on a 15-minute chart. Now you go back to your, uh, let's say, an hourly chart. Oh, I lost my regression. Where's my regression? Did I change? Where did it go? Weird. That tool is being weird today. Uh, uh, mm. Okay, that's not how we had it though. You had it this way. Okay, all right. So based on a four-hour, uh, long ways up. What, what else do we have on a four-hour? Uh, fifty-five up here, sort of, sort of, sort of. Uh, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. So, anyways, I'm going back to what I was doing. Um, yeah, I would look to. Um, Sell high at resistance. So somewhere up here sounds pretty good. Okay. So I would use technical analysis to confirm either lower low, lower high, or treat this as a bottom lower high. Okay. So I, I guess a third way you could do this is just fib this and treat it like it's already broken up. So that means somewhere between the 618 and 382. So, so this, no matter how you want to draw it, so I've done it three different ways here, that's your sell zone. If you're a bear and you're treating this bearishly, now it's a little dangerous because we got support here. Okay, so the other way of doing it is let it break that support and then do the same thing, catch the, 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 the pullback. So let me add a little more time to that to just highlight what, what I mean. I guess I, I guess I gotta zoom in now. I ain't gonna work very well. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so let's do it this way. Uh, okay, so let's say it doesn't bounce, but it breaches, okay? Then you're gonna do it this way. Somewhere between the 3A2 and 618. Okay. Now, if it hits the 50%, the what's the target? Predict the future, y'all. Right there. Cool. So let's look at this on a four hour. Uh, plan B looks like that. And then you say, well, that is a fairly big move. And I say, I know, right? So why don't we move this to Monday? And we'll make this tomorrow's trade. There you go. So it'll drop today, rise Friday, down on Monday. That's the trade plan. Will that actually happen? Oh, I have no idea. But if it does, I'm going to make money. Okay. Okay. Neat, right? All right. 
pound? Yes. What caused the value of one currency to rise or fall against another? All right, yeah, okay, uh, Forex students, this has to do with money crossing a border. And this, the reason money crosses a border is for business. Oh, shoot, and I didn't do the COT. We're going to have to do it. Let's do that again Monday because we get new COT data. Remember, I didn't want to do it until we got the new data. Uh, please, 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 please remind me on Monday. Please, please, please remind me first thing first thing on Monday during the live webinar. Okay, so business makes money across the border. If uh, Canada sells oil to Japan, Japan needs to sell, trade their Japanese yen for Canadian dollars. And the demand for the Canadian dollars pushes up the value of the Canadian dollar, just like demand for anything would. Okay. SP 500. I don't, I'm sorry, crypto. I don't have in, uh, stock indices. Uh, so I don't have stock. Indices. WT I've done. Kiwi I have not done. And uh, they had their cut. So they're at 1%, right? Like I don't, I don't think it's that I remember I in, in my 20 years or whatever it's been. I don't remember um, Kiwi being that low. Pretty amazing. So you want to do Kiwi dollar or Kiwi yen? Let's do Kiwi yen. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. What do we know? This is, remember, I explained earlier today, when you're below this area here, never, 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 never buy. Now, if you're at this price, you should expect a bounce more often than not, okay? And reversal, profit taking first, then maybe counter trend, maybe reversals. But if you're below that pink line, never, ever, 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 ever buy. Stay a bear is what I've taught you, okay? And now you can see why, okay? Now we've hit the weekly target and we're through the monthly. So really, it's Thursday, so you should be planning uh, next week. So if I were you and I was a bear and I was trading Kiwi Yen, I would sell around this 21 EMA, around this pivot, around that pivot, and my plan for all of next week would be a target of here. Sell there, take profit there, okay? So you might trade that today, you might trade that tomorrow, you might trade that Sunday afternoon, you might trade that Monday morning, but that's next week's trade. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, for show. So thank you very much, everybody. It's been an hour and 39 minutes. Thank you for investing your time into uh, hanging with me today. Hopefully it was helpful. Would you please uh, leave a, a thumbs up on the live video right now. Okay. There's uh, about a, what, 150 people, maybe more. Would you please leave uh, a thumbs up? Would you please do it right now? Right now. 90% on the live video right now. 90% of people do not, and I can't fathom why. I grew up in Canada, and my culture, where I grew up, would be like, it would be very rude not to even click the thumbs up. Okay? I just gave you an hour and 40 minutes of my life. Please click the like, dude. Come on. Like, seriously, what's the big deal? Just out of common courtesy. Please do that, okay? So, you know, 
a thousand people will watch this and, you know, 89 typically click up or something, you know, come on. So please do that. And other than that, thank you very much for being here every day. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for driving me to consistently be um, the best trader I can be. Thank you for being a client of Trader's Way. Thank you for subscribing at Forex.today. Um, I got a lot of cool things coming out in the next month for you. I hope you want them and need them and like them.